nitrogen management. One of those topics that you take in a session, and you're like, okay, I got to figure it out. I'm going to make this tweak to my practice. And then the year happens like this, which is different than the year before, and you're back to square one. It's a topic that can be challenging to present on personally because every single year is different. And what I want to share with you is two years of data from our farm at Domain on nitrogen management in wheat. And we've added one tool to our artillery to better understand nitrogen management. So we hope we can add value by sharing the results of this tool. And this tool is called a Harvest Lab 3000. What the heck is a Harvest Lab 3000? It is taking a live reading in your clean grain elevator of the protein variants in your sample. Right here, uh, bottom of clean grain elevator. This is on a uh, 690 S series. And we've had it for two years. And we are trying to better understand where the protein development is taking place in our fields, hopefully adding one layer of data to us progressing towards variable rate nitrogen management on our farm in Red River clays with very little ranging topography. And so first, you know, we talk about what do we learn year over year, and it's challenging because the weather has a, such a great effect on uh, nitrogen management and protein development. And so we're trying to get some consistency. And after two years, uh, we're hoping to learn what we learned. Highest yield areas of the field, highest nitrogen, highest protein. Highest yield, highest protein. Inverse of the historic relationship that we associate to protein development in the field is low yield, high protein. High yield, low protein. But that's not what we saw in the fall of 2022 on these three fields. These were all Starbuck fields last year, 2022, where we saw the highest yields, we saw the highest protein. And which was great. But then we asked ourselves, are we going to see this every single year within one field? So let's dig into this year's data. Hmm. Which are uh, got misplaced in the presentation, but um, as most of you know, we share everything at Pachura Seeds. And what I'm sharing you here is the importance of nitrogen in canola. We fall apply our urea last year, and on one section of our Concord, which would be 10 feet, we ran out of nitrogen, or the nitrogen got plugged. And the lesson we learned is install blockage monitors on each section of our fall fertilizing tool. So we've hope you'll hopefully alleviated that problem, but um, yeah, just a nice reminder, nitrogen phase. Anyways, that's not the trial we're, we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out if there's different regions of the field produce highest nitrogen and the highest yield. So here we go. I'm gonna pick on one field this year. This is field 17, a brand new wheat variety that's launched this year called SY Manus. And this field is really unique in the fact that uh, it used to be farmed as 280 acre section and there is a moldboard plow headland right down the middle of this quarter section. And you can see there's a ridge right here. And on that ridge, we quite often, we have some of the best soil on the farm on that ridge, um, mainly because we are good at soil erosion, wind erosion uh, back in the day with moldboard plows. But on this ridge, uh, it is a beautiful texture soil. And on top of that, it's a little bit higher than the rest of the field. So it's got great internal drainage. And I point it out because, and I'm using this field because we probably have some of the highest degree of variance of soil texture in that field because of the historical management patterns. So what I wanna key in on and look is on field 17, we've got this lower area of ground um, that is, I'm gonna say lower organic matter clay, not as good internal drainage based on topography. 
And in a year where this wheat field yielded uh, 53, it produced, despite it being the lower part of the field, not produce the highest yield. It produced some of the lower yields uh, in that 35 to 40 range. Whereas some of the more elevated higher areas of the field actually produced the highest yield in a water limiting year. But what that speaks to is the soil quality differences within this field. We don't have this field zoned map, but that would be the next step to help explain this. So why I'm showing this field, there is a decent degree of yield variance within this 145 acre field. So what does that mean for protein development? We manage this uh, flat rate uh, nitrogen. There was 130 pounds of nitrogen, sorry, 150 pounds of nitrogen applied with uh, fall applied and springtime seed and had huge amounts of residual nitrogen left in the field. So this field was not limited in nitrogen. What it may have been limited in is where the water was being removed, which was deeper than 24 inches in the soil profile. We don't know how much nitrogen was from 24 inches and down, which is where it pulled its water from through most of the growing season. So because of that, it makes interpreting and understanding the relationship of nitrogen use efficiency versus yield a little more challenging, but we're still gonna try anyways. So oh, you've already looked at the results. Where we saw two years in a row, the highest yield regions of the field and the highest protein regions of the field seem to tap out above 55 bushel an acre, but still only a 0.5 bushel, 0.5 protein spread. So no, not, not a huge variance and protein development in the field from the highest to the lowest, but it did follow the trend that we saw last year. So what's this data mean? How's it valuable? Uh, I talked about being the next layer of data to understand uh, variable rate fertility of nitrogen and understand the protein versus nitrogen efficiencies. And what we've done here in this chart is on the left axis charted the nitrogen use efficiency sorry we ch we charted the yield and the protein range then we charted on the right the percentage of nitrogen use efficiency and you can see in that in the best producing zones of the field where we had the highest protein and the highest yield we had the highest nitrogen use efficiency now again this nitrogen use efficiency is very low because a lot of the nitrogen that this crop removed was from deeper than what we measured, which was 24 inches. So it's not the perfect scenario. In a perfect world, I'd like to see our nitrogen use efficiency range between 90% and 110%. But that wasn't the case this, case this year because mother nature decided to say something different. As we move into our lower producing areas of the field uh, that are 45 to 35 bushel an acre, you can see that drop off of nitrogen use efficiency, but not to the same degree of protein increase. Increase. So there's some work to do here, but this is what that protein sensor creates, is another layer of data for you to make better decisions for your nitrogen efficiencies. So stay tuned for more as we use this Harvest Lab 3000 in the future on our fields and as we begin to take on the challenge of nitrogen zone management in the Red River Valley on our farm. Um, we're in the phases of trial development using this Harvest Lab 3000. If you have one or have seen someone use it or are curious as to how it works, uh, reach out. Let's talk about it. We're in trial development phase at Petura Seed Farm for this Harvest Lab 3000. So your input would be greatly appreciated. So please reach out to anyone on our team and or get in contact with us uh, so that we can take these trials to the next level of management and help answer the questions that you need on your farm to be more profitable. Until then, keep this nitrogen use efficiency ratio between you and me. Don't let anyone else see it, specifically the government. Bye for now.